Heaven's California Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video and today I bring you an Overwatch Flash news update. So, earlier on in the day, Jeff Kaplan, our favourite Overwatch dev, did put up the latest Overwatch development or developer update and was focusing on toxicity, uh, the reporting system, uh, how... <sighs> how can you explain it? The progress on the Mercy and Junkrat nerfs and also some had some comments on some other characters that us as the community have been highlighting might need some love or some reworks. So, after that we are going to be moving on talking a little bit about the Overwatch League but our main focus today is going to be about the development update as yesterday in FIFA, in the FIFA video, if you did miss that, go and check it out, it will be in the eye in the top right. There will be a, a link to yesterday's video and I did say I was going to do a double upload and this It was like Overwatch blessed me with this so I could do use this as my second upload so Jeff Kaplan did start off talking about the um, Toxicity in Overwatch and the ways they which they think that toxicity has improved now um, I'm pretty sure They were talking about some numbers and they were talking about how well the new reporting system have they put in place has supposedly been cutting down on toxicity and they were talking I think it was like 17% more or the since they've updated the up there the the system for uh, reporting people 20% the system is used 20% more of the time I can't quite remember the exact figures but they were talking about how they think this toxicity has gone down in Overwatch and I think it was actually the abusive chat um, that people have been reporting people for has fallen down by 17% which is a nice thing to do and I think the usage rate of the reporting system has gone up by 20% something like that along them lines um, toxicity for me is uh, well it's a very it's a very interesting topic because there isn't at the level of the game I'm at on the con on the platform I'm on toxicity differs between PC and between console um, I'm gonna turn the TV off because it's really frustrating me um, it, it, it differs between console and it differs between um, uh, the difference between Xbox PlayStation and PC that's basically what I'm trying to say and because on Xbox and because on uh, PlayStation Primarily people like to use party chat It does hinder what you hear people saying For example, I can join I can go through four or five games at the level of the game I'm currently at which is platinum um, The the gold platinum board. I've been bouncing around that for months um, The you don't tend to see many people actually communicating in the team chat there'll be people in the team chat because uh, when you join the team chat, you can see there's three or four players in the team chat. But not many people are actually using the team chat to communicate. They might just have their mic off. They might not have a mic, but they're in the team chat so they can hear calls, which is a good thing. Even if you don't have a mic, you should be using the team chat. And you often get invited to parties with other three stacks or four stacks, which I decline to use because I don't. I feel I would feel very intimidated going onto their ground because I would feel like they're in a party because they're friends. Now, if I go in there and they start hating on me, then it's going to be very awkward for me. So I always tend to just keep myself to myself and do my own thing. But he also uh, was uh, talked a little bit about people's hero pools. Now, obviously, the number one thing about toxicity is people not playing the right character. And people get very toxic about people who main or one trick other characters in the game that might not be suitable for every map and, and maybe only will be situational characters rather than characters that are effective on every map for example you wouldn't you would frown at someone who was maybe playing Torbjorn or Bastion or um, uh, a Symmetra or a May for instance on an assault escort map on the attack 
and they were touching a lot on um they would t they touched a little bit or jeff he did touch a little bit on this he said that you know the larger your hero pool the the easier you will find yourself being able to work better as a team in Overwatch competitive, which is very true. If you had a very small hero pool of maybe only one or two characters, say you only like to play healers and you are a Mercy, or you can play Mercy or you can play Lucio, but you join in a game and your Mercy and your Lucio have already been taken, then you're left in a situation where all my characters have gone, what do I play? Which you never want to find yourself in a situation about. You, If you can have your hero pool spread across a couple of things. Now, I've never been one for saying, you know, I've always, I would always recommend saying that you need a good, at least five heroes if you go into competitive, that you're on a, a good level of standard of play with, that you can play at that level. For example, if you're a tank player, you might want to know, and you want to be a main tank player, you might want to know your skills, you might want to have the same amount of time, or invest the same amount of time into your Winston, into your Reinhardt, and into your Orisa, because there'll be times where maybe you might, your team might want a Reinhardt, there'll be times where you might need an Orisa, and there'll be times you might need a Winston, but if you can only play, say, a Winston, but you've got a Roadhog or a Zarya, who are more of a an anti-dive tank, and you're playing, and you're going to want to play an aggressive defense, but they're going to be holding back, it is a very hard to then make that work as a composition. Whereas if you knew to play a, more than one tank, then it would make things a lot easier for you and your team. Which is why I, I would still think that a, a character or a hero role selection when you queue up would be more appropriate than maybe having locking in yourself as a certain player on your account rather than say, what am I trying to say here? When you queue up for Overwatch competitive in that when you hit that competitive play button, everyone in your party or that you're queuing with has a menu that pops up that says which role would you like to fill and it has DPS, it has hero, uh, it has tank and it has support and you choose one of them three. Now, obviously, if you chose all three all the time, then your matchmaking would be very difficult, and I would never recommend you trying to spread yourself across three different roles. At the end of the day, if the matchmaking system pairs you as a sole DPS player with another five sole DPS players, then that is a problem in the matchmaking system. If you want to play just DPS, then you will just play DPS, because you can try and flex onto a tank or try and flex onto a healer, but the problem that I found with a lot of this is people force people to play, you're forced into playing something that you don't want to play and you don't have the same ability to play as you would as the other tank, as the other character. Say if you're a McCree, your McCree might be at a 2700 or you might be a diamond player McCree but then you're forced to switch on to maybe an offset tank or an offset healer and on the offset healer and the offset tank that you're maybe not so comfortable on you might be more of a high gold, low platinum player, and then you're going to be holding your team back. So if you can, again, I would always try and stick to your role. This is why I never choose DPS, because it's not that I don't like playing, it's not that I don't appreciate DPS players, it's not that I don't like playing DPS, because when I'm in the arcade or when I'm in quick play, I will try and play a bit of DPS, because it helps with your accuracy. But I'll always try and stay with tanks or healers, because that is what I am. I'm a, I'm a flex player, okay? I will flex between tanks and supports. There have been a couple of times where I've had to flex between DPS, but I can tend to avoid, avoid that, because if I was trying to keep my level at Platinum with DPS players, or DPS heroes, tank heroes, and support heroes for the amount of time I spend on the game, I just wouldn't have enough time to do all that. If you're only spending two or three hours a day on the game, then you'll only be able to keep yourself to, at a maximum, two hero type categories and it's great to be able to flex between two but if you only have enough time to specialize at one or two characters then you'll have to do that but say if you only have time to specialize at a Symmetra you will get teammates getting angry at you because she is a, a situational character rather than a character that you can build a team around but that is kind of what they focused on on the toxicity 
Then they moved on to how the Mercy and Junkrat nerfs were on the PTR. And they started off in Mercy, but we'll go with Junkrat first because this one is more of a, uh, a quicker one. They basically said that Junkrat is nearly at the balance level they want him to be at. Obviously, they've nerfed the Concussion Mine. I'm not sure what else they're going to do to him. Um, I was maybe thinking they might reduce the damage of his bombs by 5. They might do that. But at the moment, it looks like they're nearly pleased with what Junkrat is at and making sure that he is balanced because they seem to have... They're going through a huge stage right now, making sure that all 26 heroes, uh, plus the 27th hero that will be with us in a few months' time, are balanced. But then they moved on to Mercy, and Mercy, again, is a character that they're having a lot of issues with because there'll be the Mercy mains. Mercy is the, is the top play, top pick, hero in the game. For a reason right now is that she's easy to play, well fairly easy to play, and a lot of people used her to boost their SR, you know I've seen people in season 2, they might have been a, a gold silver, and then now in season 5, they're in Grandmaster. To make that jump over a couple of seasons <clears throat> would be a, a big step to take, but nevertheless, Mercy, they are making changes to her Valkyrie, and when they changed, uh, Jeff was explaining, they changed her, her, her ultimate from the Resurrect to the Valkyrie to try and make sure that Mercy wasn't a must pick, and she wasn't a must pick, but they tried to tone the Valkyrie or the Resurrect down to a secondary ability, but at the moment it's not really looking like a secondary ability, because a secondary ability isn't uh, doesn't make a character must pick. It's like saying soldiers must pick because of his uh, his helix rocket. It doesn't quite make that. And they're trying to tone it down. Now they put the cast time onto the resurrect to stop it being uh, instant, which was nice. Um, then they put the, the cooldown on the double so it wouldn't automatically refresh your Valkyrie and give you another one. Um, so they took that. Now you get an extra Valkyrie but your it doesn't reduce your Valkyrie time for your previous Valkyrie, if you get what I mean. And now they're making changes to her again to try and make sure that she isn't a must pick. Because at the moment, if the enemy team has a Mercy and you don't, you're basically fighting an 8 versus 6. Which is very hard. But um, they're reducing her maneuverability and her Valkyrie, they're reducing, they're adding the cast time to the Valkyrie ultimate and they are, um, I think it was reducing her, her length and reducing the, the length, uh, they're reducing the, the distance that she can heal from, they're reducing her, um, speed in the sky, they're getting rid of the, uh, giving you one Val, uh, giving you one um, resurrect and they're adding the cast time to the resurrect they, they're doing a lot to Mercy and poor Mercy is getting a bit of a battering I personally didn't see anything wrong with the instant resurrect if you could instantly resurrect one person to the fight maybe that would have been better and you know keep the rest of it as well because Mercy's maneuverability is very good in the game anyway and I feel like they're putting themselves they've kind of backed themselves into a corner with Mercy, which they're trying to escape from because they don't want to get rid of the Valkyrie but then people are saying that maybe the Valkyrie should go but they don't want to replace it with anything else it's kind of difficult with Mercy but then they actually went on to talk about three other heroes that they might, people have been asking for them to look at for balance changes and the first one they looked at was May now poor old May has a very low pick rate um, on Overwatch Competitive and the reason for this is not because Mei is maybe not so good as a character, because her hero set is very good. We've seen a bit of Mei played in the Overwatch, uh, Overwatch League, which is good. But the, what they were touching on is that Mei is a situational character. There are situations where you could play a Mei, and there are situations where you maybe shouldn't play a Mei. For example, if you, have a, if you pair a Mei with a Symmetra, and they communicate well, that can work well. A male, a male, and a Junkrat can work well. She frees the target. Junkrat bombs the target. Symmetra's beaming at the target. It's, it's game set and match basically. But if you go and pair a May with say uh, an uh, an offensive or an attacking hero like a soldier, 
it might not work as well, which is why May is a very situational character, and which is why her pick rate is very low. And I'm afraid to say for any May players out there, what Jeff was saying was if they were to buff uh, May, she's one of these characters that's, that at the moment she's fine. If you nerfed her, she wouldn't be very effective at all, but if you buffed her, she'd be too good. So I don't think they'll do anything to May. May is just one of these characters that have a very low pick rate because she's only really useful in certain maps on certain situations. And I'm afraid we're going to have to live with that. But the next character they moved on to was Hanzo. Now Hanzo, what can we say about Hanzo? Um, he is a character that causes a lot of discrepancy within teams. I don't really have a problem with him as long as people can play him effectively but what they were focusing on was his scatter arrow ability. Now they have currently been removing one shot abilities from the game which is one of the reasons why they have been, well they have removed or I think which is why they've cut the, uh, done the changes to the concussion because it was a one shot kill with very little skill. Don't underestimate my rhyming and it's the same as the scatter arrow the scatter arrow is a one-shot kill which requires very little skill which is what they have want to try and remove from the game and it is very annoying that he I think his arrows can do about 400 damage if you land them at the right place and a lot of tank players that have 400 health like Zarya's and like a recent excuse me like Arissa's have been complaining that Hanzo can one-shot them if he aims at their feet, which is correct. I've been one-shot a lot by Hanzo's, and Hanzo will justify his place, his, his place in the team because he will get the scatter arrow kills, and he can change the fight just with one scatter arrow kill. Now, what they were saying, they're either going to... Now, what Jeff said, sorry, not what they were saying, what Jeff said is he doesn't like the scatter arrow ability either. He doesn't like that it's a one shot and they've been thinking about it as a developers, as the developing team do to see, they've been thinking about what they can do to the scatter arrow. They're either, from what I can tell from the developer update, if you haven't seen it, I'll drop a link at the top of the description. What they're either going to do is reduce the effect of, they might nerf Hanzo and reduce his scatter arrow or what they're going to do is completely delete the scatter arrow ability and give him a fresh brand new ability which should maybe change how Hanzo is played but we'll have to keep a lookout for that I don't think that's going to be coming in the pipeline um, but maybe in the next couple of months we could see something about that but the last character they did focus on was Symmetra now Symmetra again very similarly to May is a very situational hero and is very effective in certain situations and can very much control parts of the map. Now why people don't like picking Symmetra is because she's part of that support category. Now really she isn't a support role. In some ways she is a support role but if Symmetra's class is a support then Torp could also be classed as support so could a lot of other characters like a Sombra she could be classed as a support a May could even be classed as support you know there's a lot of characters that support the team in different ways you know Reinhardt his ult is a very much supporting ult it's not going to land the killer blow but it's going to help the team so maybe if they move Symmetra out of support popped her into maybe a defense hero maybe we'd see Symmetra played a little bit more because as defending hero she isn't too bad, but the problem a lot of Symmetras have is that as soon as they see them uh, turrets on the choke, people are going to know, right, they have a Symmetra, and they're going to be targeting that Symmetra with a flanking hero, and poor Symmetra can't really do much about that. And poor old Symmetra, we haven't seen her once in the Overwatch League, which is probably going to be quite worrying for um, a Blizzard, because... They've got a hero here that the pro players are avoiding for a reason. Um, you know, a lot of people get triggered. Oh my god, we have a Symmetra, what are we going to do? Well, if you support Symmetra in the right way, she can be a very good hero. She can zone out a complete part of the map very, very easily. But she is a very vulnerable character as well. Which is why I don't know what they're going to do to Symmetra. I don't think 
if they buffed her any, anything more, then she'd be ridiculous. But I don't think they'll nerf her. I don't think they'll buff her. I think they'll keep her as same. And, you know, it's just one of them characters. It's a situational character, like a May, like a Torb, like a Bastion. Who else? Um, maybe, like, a Farah. You can't play Farah on every map. They're all very much situational heroes, and some maps are suited to them, some maps aren't. But, that is all for the development update. We're going to have a quick talk about the Overwatch League. So, this is the third round, or third week of the first round of the Overwatch League. Um, and two of the Korean teams have lost their unbeaten streak. I believe, um, I think this is the first time New York XL played this week. They did lose last night to Philadelphia Fusion 3-2. To be honest, all three games last night were really, really good. High, high levels of games. So the New York XL are no longer unbeaten. We've got the uh, London Spitfire, obviously my home team. They're no longer unbeaten. They got beaten by a very, very impressive um, Boston Uprising yesterday with Dream Casper. Um, he was a very, very, he played very well last night. And I, we said that the, the other teams, apart from the Korean teams, would start to catch up with the Korean teams because the skill gap isn't that big. You know, the European, the Australian, or the, the rest of the world players aren't on like a totally different level to Korean. The Korean players might have, the only advantage they might have, or they do have, is their communication. Because they're all Korean, they can communicate in Korean, whereas the other teams have a lot of other players that may have been thrown together. You know, the New York... Um, Sale Dynasty were mostly players that came from, um, oh, who was it, the top Korean team? Lunatic High, that's the one. And then we had London Spitfire, who was made up of mainly two rosters, which was uh, GC Busan and Kongdu Panthera. And then we had the rest of the Korean players filling in at um, XL, that's a fully Korean roster as well. Now, London Spitfire got a lot of um, critique for having a full Korean roster, but what we're forgetting is it's only Seoul Dynasty who, at the top three slash four teams, say New York XL, but New York XL aren't a Korean team. So it's only Seoul Dynasty, it's only. Um, Oh, New York, no, uh, Shanghai Dragons, that are the two teams that represent their own nation. Um, you know, a lot of the American teams don't just have American players. They have players from Europe, they have players from South America, they might have players from Australia or Oceania. You know, so it's a very, you can't have a go at London Spitfire, but I, I have a feeling that the rest of the teams, um, the rest of the, uh, the rest of the teams, so the American teams, the Chinese Lee, the Chinese team, uh, are you going to be catching up with the Korean rosters because their ability was there they just had to work on that communication and Boston and Philadelphia Fusion have well proved last night that the Korean teams are not impossible to beat and the Shanghai Dragons did have a very very good go at Seoul Dynasty and were showing very average moments themselves so I think the league could get very very interesting make sure you are checking it out it is on a very weird time for us uh, UK watchers or UK viewers. Sometimes there are matches that start at 7 and then 9 at 11. I believe that's normally Saturday matches that do that. They're 7, 9 and 11. The rest of them are, you know, midnight. Sometimes you have one that starts at 10, then midnight, then 2 and then 4. The latest match is 4 o'clock in the morning. But you can always watch the highlights that always put, or the VODs are always put on Twitch. They're always put on YouTube and they'll always stay there. I don't think they get taken down. Um, you know, there's always ways of watching them. They're not supposed to be on YouTube, but they are, and there's not really much we can do about it. But if you haven't started watching the Overwatch League, then honestly, you will learn a lot from it. Even if you're a support player, if you're a tank player, or if you're a DPS player, you will learn a lot from watching the league, even if it's just a couple of games a week. But that is where we are going to leave this one then, guys. If you did enjoy, remember to drop a like on the video. Comment down below, would you like to see Hanzo Scatter Arrow nerfed? You can drop a comment or drop a vote in the straw, or not the straw poll, but the YouTube video poll up in the top right 
of your screen, you hover over that or click on your screen like a phone, you click on it, um, if you're watching the video on a mobile device or if you're watching on your PC, just hover your mouse over the, the video, there'll be an I, there'll be a link to the past three previous videos, the most recent channel playlist, and uh, normally a poll in every video where I'm asking you guys a question, and that is a huge way to show your support by dropping a like and making sure you're subscribed, you've got the notifications on, and you're dropping a comment or putting yourself, including yourself, in the poll in the top right, because I will always, always check that on every video. But as I said, if you are not subscribed already, make sure you do hit the subscribe button. You might look at the channel and go, it's all FIFA, I don't really like that. Don't worry, there will be other things in the pot, or there are other things in the pipeline where I'll be talking like this about other games, other topics, or maybe even playing some other games on the channel as well. Sometimes the videos will be um, will not be delivered to sub boxes, so if you do want to make sure you're catching every single one of the uploads, then make sure you do hit that notification button. And if you did enjoy the video, please, if you want to show your support, make sure you do share the video. If you don't want to, that's fine, but if you would like to show your support, then you can share the video, and that would be very much appreciated. But I'm going to stop talking, because I've got things to do. So if you did enjoy, as I said, remember to drop a like, and I'll catch you in the next one. Good.